Neil Lawrence is DeepMind Professor of Machine Learning at the University of Cambridge. Thanks for coming on Global Business Europe. We've got lots to talk about, but let's start with this. Why did China's AI startup DeepSeek send such shockwaves through global tech? It's, a, it's an interesting question, and my main answer was because uh, tech had swallowed its own height in terms of what I think of as AGI vaporware, and that the moat around this AGI vaporware was enormous investment in compute. And what DeepSeek showed is that through agility and clever engineering and good organization, you could compete with the very best without spending enormous amounts of money. Well, Goldman Sachs expects Chinese stocks to attract $200 billion and rise by as much as 19% this year because of the country's adoption of AI, AI technologies, including deep sea. Where is China in the global AI race? So I always find this term funny, race. <laughs> what are we actually racing for? And, you know, this is part of the AGI vaporware sort of mantra that we're somehow racing to achieve this state of AGI. Look, each country has to decide where it wants to be. Now, undoubtedly, China is a leading force in this technology, but different countries are doing different things. Singapore is one of the leading countries in deploying the technology. So I think there's a real danger across the world in this obsession with the notion of race, rather than stepping back and saying, this is a transformative technology. There's no such thing as artificial general intelligence, but this is a transformative technology, and it can take our societies to some extraordinarily good places or some extraordinarily bad places. And by not focusing on that question, we're in danger of the race leading to somewhere that none of us want to be. But do you think that Deep Seek maybe opened things up a little bit? I mean, I wonder which other countries you expect might now dip their toe or, or enter the AI world with gusto? No, I think it's been a tremendous restorative to what was an appallingly polluted debate that a smaller company has been able to show such performance. It's given an enormous amount of encouragement to companies in Europe or even smaller companies in the US that they can also compete against this narrative, which is basically a sort of Silicon Valley, Wall Street combined narrative that you have to be enormous to succeed. So I think it's tremendously exciting. Now, I think where the next one comes from, well, I hope they're coming from a diversity of places. We've seen France is made has made great investments. Um, Germany also has a lot of startups. Um, and I'd love something to come from the UK. What about Africa? Um, what about India? So that's a great question. And actually, I've spent the last 10 years um, working with colleagues in Africa, an organization called Data Science Africa, which is building technologies developed on the continent. Now, there's lots of diversity of applications that can be used there, but what we really want is a world where people who have the problems can solve their own problems, rather than the world we're being sold on, which is one where a few companies deploy these solutions for the benefit of everyone. That has not worked. We are already in a difficult position with a concentration of power, with very few digital companies. And what this technology does offer is the possibility that everyone can interact with their machines in the ways that in the past only software engineers were able to do. Okay, so you're saying this could make it much more universal, but then I'm thinking mm, that we're going to have to have some global AI governance, we're going to have to have some regulation. What can we expect? Yeah, and I think that's the really tough bit. The sort of, we've seen this enormous swing from the summits to one with this sort of almost bizarre, paranoid creation of what I think of as sort of the AI bogeyman at the um, UK AI Safety Summit to sort of enormous AI boosterism in France. And, and perhaps that's understandable. Perhaps as politicians get to grips with the technology that they themselves don't understand, they're going to swing between these two extremes. But what I hope is more rapidly we can get to an understanding of, look, this technology is transformative. It has great potential, and there are great pitfalls associated with it. But unfortunately, a lot of those debates are not going to happen under the glare of an international spotlight. They're going to happen in the background. And one of the things I'm nervous about is more division within the research community, less access to these technologies for universities and other civil society groups, because it's those groups that will develop these technologies in the beneficial directions. Neil Lawrence, the University of Cambridge, thank you very much.